morning, everyone. Thanks for coming. My name is Jonathan Darling. I'm the public information officer at the Sheriff's Office. Um, I'll introduce Sheriff Hudson in just a second. I just want to run down just a couple details from yesterday, and then I'm going to turn it over to the Sheriff. He'll make a statement, um, and then we'll take questions, okay? So yesterday morning around 8.30, um, Sheriff Hudson got a call, a three-way call from regional ICE officials informing him that our contracts were being canceled from the Department of Homeland Security. And then as soon as the sheriff hung up the phone, um, we have law enforcement deputies who are um, assigned to the ICE headquarters up in Burlington. They were told to turn in their credentials and go home and come back to Dartmouth immediately. Um, after that happened, Superintendent Souza, who heads our security operation, got a call um, from ICE saying they were coming down, they were picking up all their equipment and they were taking the credentials of our 287G um, deputies who have specialized ICE training. So that all happened one after another. We had seven ICE folks in this building yeah, yesterday morning, and they were all moved to Plymouth County Sheriff's Office by 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So as of right now, we don't have any more ICE folks in our custody. There are two, the cancellation affects two separate partnerships that we have with ICE. They're different, but they're, they're kind of similar. The first is the housing and transportation of ICE folks housed in the ICE facility. Some were down in the regular um, house of correction. And then transportation, we do a lot of transportation for ICE, bringing detainees to courthouses, to Burlington, to the regional headquarters, um, to other sheriff's offices and placement. We did all that transportation with them, both um, no more housing and no more transportation after the cancellation. The second is the 287G program, which is sort of a screening program that allows um, specialized trained officers here to access the ICE files and databases um, to screen folks who come into our facility who identify as foreign born to see if ICE is interested in them to see what their histories are and things like that. So those are two separate um, contracts that we have with ICE that have both been terminated as of yesterday. So with that, I'll turn it over to Sheriff Hodgson. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jonathan. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here this morning. As um, Jonathan had just told you, we received this notice yesterday. I got that call early in the morning. And what was really troubling to me was that when I had that, received that call, uh, I knew at that moment that it would be a sad day for the people of this county, the people of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the citizens that all of us promised to protect, and the people of this nation. How dare Secretary Mayorkas represent somehow that our agency was going to no longer have this ICE operation that I've been running, this building that I built in 2000, it's opened in 2007 for 15 years, getting stellar audit reports, being looked upon as the model for the nation, and for him to suddenly, the flash of a phone call, shut down this operation and put the people of my county at risk and the people of this state and this nation. But you see, we shouldn't be surprised by Secretary Mayorkas doing this because his credibility has clearly nationally been in question for quite some time. He stood before the cameras and told this nation, the borders are secure, there's no crisis at the border, and the border's closed. Well, that's a lie. That's a lie, and everybody in law enforcement knows it. You see, we're not interested in playing politics. The sheriffs of this nation got elected by the people like he did and took the same oath he did as well as the President of the United States. And they ought to be ashamed of themselves for standing in front of cameras and lying to people that this is good for them. It's not, and you won't find a sheriff in this country that will tell you that. You know, I'm going to tell you what this is really about. This is the rollback they've been play, planning for a long time under the Biden administration through the secretary. You see, about a month ago, Secretary Mayorkas was down at the border talking to some border sheriffs at a private meeting. And you know what he told them? We're going to be moving to get rid of programs like 287G and others. Yeah, I knew this was coming. Didn't surprise me. But I really didn't think that they wouldn't have the courage to say, we're all about protecting the lawbreakers rather than supporting law enforcement and the people they promised to protect. I never thought that they would try to hide it under some cloak 
of um, lies where they suggested that somehow in, in his letter that this operation is really operationally unnecessary after 15 years, please, with thousands of people crossing the border. So if that's true, what are you telling us, Mr. Secretary, Mr. President? That the thousands and thousands of MS-13 members, the gang members that are intimidating our kids and our communities, the drugs pouring in, the fentanyl that's poured in just so far in the Biden administration that is more that came in all of last year that would kill a quarter of this nation. You're telling us that that's okay? That's okay and it doesn't matter? Again, enough is enough. They may not want to uphold their oath, but I'm not turning my back on mine. I'm standing up for the people, and my, my staff will stand up for the people that we swore to protect in this county. And we'll do everything we can to continue partnering with our federal, state, and local law enforcement partners who have been demonized. This is no different than the defunding of police, and it's outrageous. And for them to look at a camera, as my Orcas did, and tell people that the border's secure, no crisis, and then to talk about they're all about treatment, you know, decent treatment for people who are being held in immigration facilities and all that as though we were a problem. This is the same man who had no problem telling you everything was fine at the processing stations, which I've been to on four different occasions over my career, where most recently they had 4,000 kids in a building where it was housed for 250 max, laying side by side, 10% with COVID. Don't you feel like we're kind of doing a rescript of the Wizard of Oz? Pay no attention to what's behind that curtain. That's what this administration's about. And the sheriffs of this nation are mobilizing. We formed a group called Protect, Protect America Now, and we've asked people all over this nation, not just the sheriffs, but everybody, to get on board with us and let's reestablish the rule of law and allow law enforcement to do its job to hold people in these facilities that otherwise would get released and expose them to more dangers. And I want to just share a couple of things with you about, for example, some of the people we've had in our custody include aggravated assault and battery with a dangerous weapon, violation of a protective order, rape of a child, statutory, already been deported once. November 11th, assault and battery on a family household member, strangulation, suffocation with prior arrest for assault with a dangerous weapon, arson, and attempted murder, armed carjacking. This, these are the kinds of people we're holding here. And they think it's okay for us to put them out in the community and not hold them and expose families? What are all the families, the mothers and fathers that are walking into the bedroom to wake up their son or daughter to go to work because they overslept and they're not waking up? What about all the angel moms and dads in this nation who've lost their loved ones? No. If you listen to what happened when we had that May incident, you had Elizabeth Warren and the rest of the clan down in Washington come out with a letter saying close the ICE facility. Even the AG's report hadn't been done yet, which is a sham political hit that's based in lies, based in untruths, no facts. And that's another one ought to be ashamed of herself for weaponizing her office to try to advance her position to try to run for governor of Massachusetts. How dare they demonize my staff? How dare they? They came right to the rescue of all these detainees who assaulted me, and I'm the only one that got hurt in that situation where I had neck injury for over a year. Assaulted from behind with a chair. A lieutenant assaulted with a chair. My staff assaulted. And the Attorney General dares to say that our move that took 90 seconds to get everybody in flex cuffs was civil rights violations? We violated state law by using canine because the law says we can't use canine to go into, to do a cell extraction? First of all, it's standard operating procedure on a move like that, to use canine. They were muzzled and there were no cells. She doesn't even know the law. She, she made public charges against my people 
who are amongst the best in this nation, accused them of a crime. She said they violated these people's civil rights. It's been a year now, Attorney General. Where are the charges? Everybody knows what she was doing. It's the second time she's tried to weaponize her office against my department, and we've got the record to prove it. So no, we're not going to stand down and allow Attorney General Ma of Massachusetts, Attorney General Mara Healey, to celebrate the idea that this building would be closed and more people that she's supposed to be also protecting are now getting exposed to danger, to drug overdoses for their families. She may not have the same commitment I do and the sheriffs across this nation do, but we are not turning our back on the people that elected us. And shame on her, shame on Secretary Mayorkas, and shame on President Biden for allowing this to go on. They all ought to be ashamed of themselves. And don't stand there and pretend that you're representing the interests of the people who elected you, because you're not. You're not. I want to just quickly let you know that Secretary Mayorkas said essentially that there's ample evidence that the detention center treatment of detained individuals and the conditions of the detention are unacceptable. Three times the acting director of ICE was asked yesterday by the Massachusetts sheriffs, why was this done? Does this have something to do with that federal inquiry that you all were doing that you still haven't given us a report on? He said, no, I haven't even seen that report. Well, what is it about? It's operationally unnecessary to have this facility. Well, guess what? That's a lie. It is operationally necessary. And as I said earlier, thousands of people pouring over the border. If you believe that, then you've got to believe they're saying none of those people are going to get arrested. We're going to let them come into your communities and keep coming and pour more drugs in. And it doesn't matter. Plymouth County relies on us to provide transportation to get the detainees to them. They didn't, they didn't shut their facility down, but they might as well have. How are they going to get the detainees? This is all part of them rolling back what they planned on doing to begin with. But we're not going to sit silent and be party to it. Our audits over the years, as I said, have proven that we are, and it's been said of us, we are a model for the nation. We just had an audit done a week ago by the feds, and we're inspecting more than meat packers are. And you know what they said? Outstanding. From our policies, procedures, to use of force, all the things in place. You know why? Look around these facilities here. When you drove down this driveway, everything was manicured perfectly in place. That standard doesn't end when you walk in this building, and it doesn't end down there. It's part of who we are, and it's part of who we've always been. So I'm not going to stand here and let them perpetuate lies to you. If they don't have the courage to tell you that their agenda is about shutting down law enforcement and the sheriffs and everybody else and making it less safe for you and your communities, shame on them. But the public, they know it, we know it, and we have no agenda other than fulfilling our oath and keeping our promise to the people.